In this module, we are going to be covering action potentials. And the reason this is important is because it involves the electrolytes. And whenever our patient has an imbalance in their electrolytes, it has the potential to create an arrhythmia. So understanding the movement of electrolytes throughout the cell that are primarily involved in creating an action potential, which is the movement of energy from one cell to another and allows for that mechanical contraction, will help us to understand arrhythmias in the future. So let's get started. Okay, so here we have our electrolytes that are primarily involved in the action potential. Now, sodium and calcium are found in greater concentrations in the extracellular fluid, and potassium is found in greater concentrations in the intracellular fluid. It is the movement of these electrolytes that we talk about and how their movement creates changes in the cell that will result in a contraction and a relaxation, relaxation of a myocyte, also known as depolarization and repolarization. Now, due to the location of the sodium and the calcium in the extracellular fluid and the abundance of them, the net charge is higher on the outside than it is internally inside the cell. This means that if you had, for example, a bank account and you had more money at home than you had in the bank, you would have a positive surplus in home and less in the bank. Now, I want to also add here that we do have a value that we associate with the electrical charge of the cell. And so at this rate in its resting state, minus 60 millivolts is that resting charge. So just imagine maybe you're minus $60 overdrawn, and this will maybe help to give you a sense of how this is going to work. So when an action potential is initiated, the first thing that happens is that the sodium needs to move into the cell. And so we have these things called funny channels, and I'll put them in here for you. Once they are stimulated to create a change, that sodium will start to move inside the cell. Now, if I've got positive coming inside, so just think you're making a deposit into the bank, you're no longer going to be $60 overdrawn, but you've put some money in. And so now we're going to actually move it to a minus 40. We're only $40 overdrawn now. So things are getting better, right? And then once we hit to that minus 40, it kicks into another element of this action potential chain. And that means that the calcium channels are going to open. And so maybe in this case, you found somebody who's going to match your donations. And so the calcium channels are also going to contribute. And when they open, that calcium moves inside. So again, we have more positive going inside. And then that causes a massive increase in the value to a positive 10 of millivolts. And this is where the contraction actually occurs. And so then in order to put things back to normal, we have to repolarize, which means that we have the movement of potassium outside of the cell. Sorry, then we'll have the sodium pump channels open, which will actually push more sodium out against the gradient because it's still positive outside the cell, but we need to push it out. And so there's an active transport that happens there. Now the cells that actually generate the action potential, that electrical charge within the heart, those are specialized cardiac cells. And that's the ones we we're talking about at the minus 40 or minus 60 millivolts and going up to the plus 10. The actual cardiac myocytes, the muscle cells, require a little bit larger stimulus. So we're going to look at two different pictures next. The first will show you the action potential against the cardiac specialized cells. And then the second one is going to show you the difference with the myocytes. Essentially, the, the concepts of action potential is the same. It will help you to put together the medication with the site of action and how that will be impacting a cardiocyte versus a myocyte, a cardiomyocyte. Let's just take a look at that next. You can see there's different phases. We call them, you do not need to know that for this, but this is just to put this into a different perspective for you. Phase four is when we're back at that initial depolarization. Nothing's happened yet, but we're starting to get a little antsy. We need to make a change. Those funny channels open up and sodium goes in. So we go from minus 60 to minus 40, as you can see here on the graph. As soon as we hit minus 40, we now have that person who's going to match our contributions and they put in their money and we go, whoa, we're at positive 10 millivolts, contraction occurs. This is where the depolarization is starting to happen. And as the potassium is moving out, and the calcium channel is closed, we still have contraction, but at some point it needs to release, and then we get relaxation, repolarization is this phase three. 
Now in the cardiomyocytes in the muscle, there's a little bit of a different process and we're gonna look at that next. Starting with phase four, the resting phase, active sodium potassium pumps return the cell to the resting state. In phase zero, we have rapid rushing of sodium into the cell. These are called fast channels. And this will change the net charge internally as it drives closer to zero. You'll see it goes from minus 90 up to about plus 20. In phase one is our initial repolarization. The threshold is met. So the sodium channels will close and then some potassium channels will start to open. Phase two is the plateau. Calcium and sodium channels are open to enter into the cell and potassium is moving out. So this is our massive contraction depolarization. In phase three, we begin repolarization where potassium will continue to leave the cell and the voltage will return back to its negative state of resting in phase four. Now let's talk a little bit about the medications. Class one sodium channel blockers will actually have an effect on phase zero. This is where the sodium rushes into the cell. Now this is going to prolong the time it takes to create an action potential. This is often used with ventricular arrhythmias and atrial fibrillation, others like such as Wolf Parkinson White. When we look at class two drugs, that's the blue box, they affect phase four. Now phase four is our relaxation phase, our repolarization phase. And so this is the movement of potassium back into the cell. This is also going to create an excitation of the vagal nerve and the vagal nerve as we talked about helps to calm and slow things down. Our class three medications, these are our potassium channel blockers. They're gonna create a change in the atrial and ventricular arrhythmias by preventing the movement of potassium back into the cell, delaying the time it takes to repolarize and be able to accept a new signal. Our class four, the calcium channel blockers, these ones are gonna reduce ventricular rate by reducing the flow of calcium into the cell and that calcium is the, the needed ingredient for muscular contraction. Now I talked about the action potential in an analogy of using money in the bank. I'm overdrawn, I need to put something in. Once it gets above zero, big party, woo woo, and then you spend it and you're back down in the hole again. But here's another way to look at it in terms of a concert. So we know that a stadium is round usually and it's got many doors. We'll consider those the channels. So the stadium itself is the cell. The doors are the different channels for sodium, calcium, potassium to move in and out. The potassium inside the cell is the volunteers and at rest, it's pretty relaxed in there, nothing's happening. The volunteers are waiting to open the doors to allow the fans and the guests in. Sodium is gonna be you, the fan, and there's a lot of fans outside. So you can imagine the energy outside the stadium is quite heightened compared to what's happening inside the stadium. They're just hanging out waiting. And then calcium is gonna be the band, right? So band is one that really comes in and kicks it up just like the calcium does in the cell. It comes in there and it causes the contraction. So if we take a look at this picture again about the action potential, we can now see and visualize here's my stadium. Everything's relaxed, nothing's happening yet. All the volunteers are inside. And here's the fans and the band members are hanging out out there, maybe we'll just We'll just say the band members are hanging out with them. Now, when those doors open, as you have gone to a concert before and those doors open, there's usually a mad rush of people coming in. And so it's really just quite simple. Show your ticket in and show your ticket in because everyone's moving in the same direction at this point. So there we go, we have our doors open and the fans are all moving inside. The volunteers are still inside too. They haven't left yet because they still have a job to do. Now, when we get to the right number of fans, then we can let the band come on the stage. We're ready to go. And we're going to now open up the door for the band to come out onto the stage. And here they come, whoa, we're rocking in here now. Things are really happening. At this point, our potassium, our volunteers, they're not needed. So they're gonna go on break and they're gonna have a little rest. And then what happens when it comes time to exit the venue is it's a little bit more work to get out, don't you think? Because now the volunteers are standing at the door. They're making sure that you're leaving and not coming back in. And it's a little bit more of a push sometimes to get in, out, in, out. And that's the act of transport to get the sodium potassium pump working. Volunteers trying to get back in to do their job, fans trying to get out. Okay, so we've done two analogies for action potentials. One was a bank that was overdrawn 
And when you put money in, you have a party and then you become overdrawn again. And the second was going to a concert. And I hope those have been useful for you and you can definitely use that to explain action potentials to your patients and to your colleagues. Let's move on to our next lesson.